My speech is based on the premise of an article written in the Duke Law Journal titled Unspeakable Ethics, Unnatural Law by Arthur Allen Lev. Before I begin, I would like to share a story of my personal religious journey. I was born and raised in a Sikh household, spelled S-I-K-H, which is a religion that originates from the northwestern state of Punjab, India. I spent many years attending a Gurdwara, which is the equivalent of what a church is to Christians and a mosque to those and a mosque to those of the Islamic faith. During my middle and high school years here in the United States, I spent most of my Wednesdays and Sundays immersed in a local non-denominational church known as Wilson Praise and Worship. During that time, I also attended New Hope Baptist Church, where I learned about the various denominations of Christianity. Throughout my travels, I've had the opportunity to learn and experience various religious cultures in the settings of mosques, churches, and Buddhist and Hindu temples. One experience that always stuck out with me and that resonated with me was a temple of the Hindu faith that I visited many years ago during my travels in India. It was a temple dedicated to the deity Kali, goddess of time, doomsday, and death. Here, people from all over the world would pay their respects by thanking her for sparing them from the negatives of life and asking for continued immunity from any future hardships uh, and death that may come one's way. This experience left me wondering, if there are so many religions that are followed by millions and even billions of people, then who are we as humans to judge what is real and what is fake? By doing so, wouldn't we be acting as if we were all-knowing? Wouldn't we be playing God? The basis of unspeakable ethics, unnatural law is that of a debate. It talks about our social systems, whether it be the laws that our politicians create, the moral compasses instilled through various religious teachings, and our internal intuition that guides us in what is right and what is wrong. The article challenges us to think about life in the presence of God and in his absence. In his presence, something such as the Ten Commandments is a set of rules and guidelines that are to be followed and respected, no questions asked. Who are we as mere humans to question a system divined by a divine higher being that exists in an entirely different realm? However, in his absence, we ask ourselves, who is the rule creator themselves unruled? For any individual to determine what is right and what is wrong, what religion is real or fake, what laws are to be followed and to not be followed, would it be the notion that this individual is divine in his or her thinking? Wouldn't that be playing God? Therefore, I would like to bring our conversation to the topic I'm here to discuss today, ethics and business in the absence and presence of God. In the business world, we talk about corporate social responsibility, which is also known as CSR. This is a company's duty in understanding the effects and consequences that their business model has on all stakeholders involved, directly or indirectly. Stakeholders can be employees, the community, families of the workforce, and even the living animals in ecosystems polluted by the company. For example, we are currently moving towards a world where we will and are facing vast scarcities of water. Did you know that for every one liter of Coca-Cola produced, two liters of water are used. A majority of the time, this water is extracted from underground aquifers. Coca-Cola has been known for going into developing countries where property laws and water education are scarce and extracting so much water for their product that the water table becomes near impossible to reach even by the deepest of wells. Most of us would say that's wrong. Coke shouldn't be taking water from other individuals. As our article would question, says who? In a God-based system, or rather in the presence of a higher being that directs our internal moral compass, we know that this is wrong, that we as humans need water to survive, and that we should not be taking it from our neighbors in more impoverished nations. Especially in order to use it for the production of something extremely unhealthy, such as Coca-Cola. But now in the absence of God, who is the one or group of ones to determine that this is wrong? That the resource of water isn't there for the taking by any company or individual with the capacity and vision for profit. Isn't that how we determine success in our society? Growth, jobs created, and GDP? Who are the judges themselves and judged if not him himself? Let us look at it from a different perspective. 
Think about the Enron scandal, where hundreds of thousands of Americans were fraudulently cheated out of their retirements by a crooked and unethical executive team. Many Americans blindly followed the advice of financial advisors, analysts at big banks in Wall Street, as well as their fellow friends and family members who also believed in the story Enron was selling. Many would say that the executive team that led the company was corrupt and unethical. Others would argue that the individuals themselves were to blame. Who had blindly put their money somewhere without doing the necessary due diligence required in order to decrease risk and uncertainty involved? Who is the one to determine what is right and what is wrong in the absence of God? Therefore, I want to challenge the audience to always ask ourselves, what is right and what is wrong, based on what, determined by who, in the presence of God and in his absence. I'd like to conclude my speech as Arthur Allen Leff concluded his profound article. Is it wrong to commit fraud? Is it right to be humble? Is it wrong to cheat and steal? Is it right to love thy neighbor? Are politicians all knowing in their quest to create laws that govern people? Are your instructors correct in determining guidelines for the classroom that are to be followed by all of their students? Rules created by who? Preferably, a righteous creator themselves uncreated. Thank you.